Welcome back to another track test video where we're about to find out just how quick the new 2020 Toyota Supra is around our home track here at TMP. If you guys watched our full and very detailed review on the 2020 Supra from the press launch in the States down at Summit Point in uh, West Virginia, then you'll already know everything there is to know about this car. But uh, if you want a little quick overview, then we'll do that now. This is a ground up, clean sheet of paper sports car built by BMW in partnership with Toyota. Everyone knows about the trolling that goes on about this being a BMW, but we know from having gone on that launch and having done a lot of research on it that Toyota actually played a very big part in the, the design and, uh, and the tuning of this car. I think really it's the tuning that speaks the most to me from that initial press test drive about it actually having a lot of Toyota DNA in it. Uh, in fact, the chief engineer, uh, Tetsuya Tata, was there telling us about that whole process and how involved Toyota really was in the design and development of this, this all-new sports car. And the fact that there is an all-new sports car in this relatively affordable uh, price range is pretty exciting for car guys like us because, frankly, there just aren't a lot of sports cars coming out these days. The market's moving in other directions. So exciting to see a true driver's car being produced and to finally be able to test it here on our home track and really give it a full and complete shakedown is a big day for me. I'm pretty pumped on it. And as you guys know, it has a straight six uh, B58 engine. It's rated at 335 horsepower. Although on the dyno, we know from other people dynoing these cars that they're, it's quite a bit stronger than that. We've seen dynos as high as 360 at the wheel out of this car. So it has a lot of motor. It's going to be fast in a straight line. Obviously it's rear wheel drive. It's got all the good bits on it. It's got big brakes. We could not fade the, the brakes at that press event. I don't expect I'll have any brake issues here. It comes on Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. Not the 4S's, but the Pilot Sports, which is sort of like the previous generation, but still a very good sticky tire. I think it's a 320 Treadwear rating. It'll work very well, well around here. Obviously you could put a stickier tire on and go faster, but we want to find out how fast this car is in completely stock form. So. I'm going to put on my helmet, I'm going to go in there and turn it into, put it into sport mode, turn off all the, the nannies, and uh, go rip some hot laps around here. And... Alright guys, out of the front straight here, I'm going to give it the full stick for three hot laps, see what we can come up with. Hurt onto the brakes into turn one, lots of, oh, lots of EVS, wow it did, a, it did a nice thing there actually where it rotated very early. And then with just a quick correction, it's straightened right out again. So, like that, really lets me get the car turned early. Little trail braking into two, a little too aggressive, I think. And I blew that apex completely. And I need to be probably shifting manually as well. Although I find this ZF does do an exceptional job, even in full auto mode. I'll try one lap in full auto here, I guess, and see what we get. But. I feel like I probably, Jesus Christ, there's no grip there. That braking zone is super greasy. I will say it's a fun car to drift. Super well balanced, very easy to catch it correct. But for a hot lap, I don't want to be sliding quite that much. So tidy it up, Dave, tidy it up. Channel your inner PT. Heard on the brakes at the turn one here. Breaking a little earlier to try to get it balanced into one. Still sliding a little bit there, but not too badly. I mean, ultimately we are on a 320 wet treadwear tire here, so we are gonna be playing that traction game just a little bit. And that's okay. I mean, that's what you expect out of a, a true street car. This is not a race car. It's not on a race tire, so. I gotta be prepared for the fact that it's gonna slide a little, but nice little pendulum slide into the S's there. And into turn six, just trying to tidy this up, get on the power in a better way. But I mean, the one thing about TMP is it has a lot of tight, severe corners. So it's not like driving the big track at most sport where you gotta be super smooth. This is an aggression track. It's almost like a big autocross. You really have to attack it hard to get a lap out of it. But you also need to balance that aggression against available traction. So I'm trying to do that as intelligently as I can here. And on to the front straight. Woo! This is an engaging car, everybody. Nice slide through turn one. <laughs> okay. Well, 
scrap that lap. <laughs> we'll give her one more, but I guess when you completely blow turn one, it gives you an opportunity to try some other things. So I'm gonna try to really slow the car a bit more here and then get it into the S's. It just wants to rotate hard there. <laughs> okay, Dave. Get your head in the game, buddy. Woo! Hard on the brakes into turn two. Get it slowed here. Wow, it's just rotating naturally there. Beautiful. Really nice. Just a hint of trail braking and it just rotated beautifully into turn three there. Let's see if we can do the same into six here. Just keeping that slide under control and then using the traction. This thing does have really good drive and traction out of the corners. I think it's a car that you want to get turned early and then use that traction if you can. Down into turn eight here, get it turned. It almost feels like you're stopping the car there because it's such a severe corner. Sliding it a little through the dog leg, which is not advisable. Out of the front straight. Got to be patient with the throttle there because you do not want to slide into the wall. Woo. What a machine. This thing is a workout. I'm feeling it, everybody. Getting a sweat on. All right, everybody. Lap timer doesn't lie. I did a best of a 119.54, which it's pretty darn quick. I gotta say, I have not tested a lot of bone stock factory cars that have broken the 120 barrier around here. That is not an easy marker to break. I could go back, back out there and really chase time and maybe knock another half second off that just by developing a little bit more familiarity with the car. I was struggling a little bit with the paddle shifters versus leaving it in full auto mode. I actually found I was more comfortable in full auto mode because it was shifting so well. It would downshift beautifully in all the braking zones. And there were times where I might have wanted to be in a lower gear, but I kept forgetting that this turbocharged motor is a torque monster. This thing pulls you out of the corners really strongly, even if you're maybe a gear uh, higher than you think you might want to be. I was trying to shift by, you know, by sound, not really knowing where the proper shift points are in this car yet. So definitely have some learning to do with the car, but man, I'd love to go out there for an hour or two and just play around with it because this car is super capable and so well balanced. I was really playing a lot with trail braking. I found that on turn in, if I was it carried too much speed, it was too aggressive on turn in, and the car picked up a little bit of understeer. If I just trail braked a little bit into those braking zones instead, it would just rotate really early and bam, I could go back to the throttle and then it was just a balancing game of you know playing with traction. So as you guys would have seen from the in-car video, really the limiting factor right now is the tires and maybe the driver too. I was overdriving the car quite a bit. It was sliding around everywhere and that's a lot of fun and it does tell me a lot about the car's base tuning. It is a very, very trustworthy car at the limit. It'll oversteer in a very gradual, progressive way that you can easily catch. I do find with the shorter wheelbase, this actually has a shorter wheelbase than a Toyota 86 everyone and because of that it is a little snappier so it'll go to a bigger angle a little quicker than the FRS and therefore it will require a bit more of a correction but once you get your brain calibrated to that it's a very easy car to drive at the limit it really does inspire confidence and it lets you play with it it's a very playful car and I didn't necessarily expect that because at some point it was so grippy that I didn't really get a sense of how how willing it would be to go over the limit and, and, and sort of stay in that slip zone where you can kind of play around with it on a pivot. And it really let me do that around here on this tight and technical track. I'd love to put a stickier set of tires on it. That may be something we do in the future because I'd love to see how much quicker we can go on that. And the one other thing I might want to do from a tuner's perspective is put a more aggressive brake pad on it because the brake pedal travel is quite long. Never had any brake fade and I blitzed the braking zones hard. I mean, it was full ABS and everything. As far as driving position goes, I think it's fantastic. It's clearly built as a true sports car around the driver. The fully adjustable column I love. I get the steering wheel as close and, and in the right position. And pedal positions, I mean, it's only two pedals, but you're, you're in a really nice driving position. And these seats are very supportive. As an interesting point of comparison, back in my days uh, being a test driver at AutoGuide, I did a 119.6 in a 991, 911 uh, C4S. So this just turned a faster lap time than a 911, everybody. And I know Toyota was, was sort of targeting the Cayman S with this car. So I think we can confidently say that it is quicker than a Cayman S around this racetrack. Without a true head-to-head -head battle, obviously, we can't say for sure. And maybe that's something we do in the future. If you have a Cayman S, as a matter of fact, reach out to us because we can probably borrow this car again and we'd love to do a head-to-head -head battle like that. So I think that is a wrap on this track test of the new 2020 Supra. 
Love the car, man. It is so well balanced. It is a true driver's car. I'm really excited to see what the aftermarket does with it. As a matter of fact, if you want to let us know what kind of track test videos you'd like to see, check us out on Instagram and on Facebook and maybe uh, use the YouTube community section as well. And of course, the comment section here is always a good way to do it. But direct communication is a good thing, everybody. So thank you again for watching. We really, really appreciate all the support. We'll see you again soon.